Here's a question for you. With AEW having all this talent, and they've been bringing in a lot of talent, and now they're also starting to use some talent from New Japan, for instance, do you have one roster with the introduction of the Friday show for everything, or do you try to split it up a little bit? Oh, good God, no. Because then, you know, those fans, they'll if they split their rosters into two, then they'd have double champions for everything like the guys on the other channel have. They've got triple champions. And then champions for the other countries. Um, no way. And, and by the way, this Friday on the experience, we're going to go down the AEW roster and separate the wheat from the chaff as we have with the WWE roster or this Saturday, I should say, not Friday, but no, God damn. If, if you've got this much momentum and you've got a new show debuting and you've got these big events that they better, even though they're, well, now these these live events are they all television tapings also, or are some of them just house shows? The tennis stadium are they doing TV there? I believe so. I think the only house shows there've only been a couple of house shows. There was one in Jacksonville that they taped, but they didn't air it. Okay, but the point is, you know, basically with all of these new mega names coming from the WWE and et cetera, et cetera, make you a, the best roster you can make out of everybody you've got eliminate a lot of the crap that they end up sticking on YouTube to begin with and concentrate on those guys. Don't split your talent now to where they're only going to be on this TV show or that TV show. What the fuck you can, you can actually, not only should they, they don't feature all the talent they have now that's worth featuring because everything has to go 25 fucking minutes. When you get these kids in the ring, they can't stop playing. They can't have a five minute match to give a guy a win and let him say something and not be attacked or kidnapped or what a shot into space or whatever. They ought to concentrate on using all the big top talent they've got now Man, maybe they can have some fucking shorter segments on their two hour show so it wouldn't, it, you could get more people exposed and you wouldn't have those long marathons. And on the hour show, recap what went on on the two hour show, which is your mothership, it's your main program, and feature some of the new talent, whether you're trying to, newer talent that you're featuring on top and trying to get over. And you you would have plenty of time. They keep saying, oh, we've only got two hours. We don't have time to expose all our talent. Yes, you do. If you don't let every single one of them go 20 fucking minutes every goddamn time they get out there. Their girls matches eat up 15 fucking minutes. It's national TV. That's, and I mean, among the many other things that Vince has lost track of that he used to teach people, I mean, I already knew this because it was beaten into me from the territories. Every time you get a promo, you know how much two minutes of TV in fucking New Orleans costs? But it was beaten into everybody's heads. Hey, hit your times. You know how lucky you are to be given this time. Two minutes to talk on national TV. Five minutes to have a match on national TV. Every minute counts. It's $100,000 for 30 seconds on his fucking network or whatever. So don't go over and don't drone on and don't fucking wear out your welcome. Of course, sometimes guys going the amount of time they were told to still wore out their welcome, but not usually on television. Most of the time it was either on pay-per-view or fucking in house shows. Nevertheless, just streamline this shit and get your top guys. And I saw something about this. They said they actually have somebody on Twitter or the internet said this that they actually have somebody going by these minute by minute or quarter hour ratings. And the people that they feature most on the show are the people that have gotten the biggest quarter hour ratings in the past. God damn, that's fucking ludicrous. Don't you understand that you are writing the song that plays on the radio? You're going to tell the people what they fucking like based on how you feature these people. Of course, if you've got the ingredients of a tasty cake, 
out there being exposed individually. Most people are going to take a fucking cheeseburger over sugar. But when you put it all together by that measure and that criteria, n almost none of the stars who became stars in wrestling would ever get have gotten over because you'd just be seeing the same fucking people most all the time. And in some cases, because of their weird audience, that's probably why we see pockets all the time. Because they think that his past quarter hours translate to this is going to mean business for us. That's exactly why. That and the merch sales. You take a team like FTR when you signed them. They were the best tag team in the world, not after they've been beaten and devalued and demoralized by the Young Bucks. But you take them, and the first time you put them on television, they're not going to get a big quarter hour because it's not a train wreck or a plane crash or a fucking car accident where people are rubbernecking like with pockets or the dwarf dong sucker or whatever the first couple of times. And you expose FTR by giving them wins and speak and hey, give them credibility and their quarter hours will increase over time. Not just FTR, but anybody, any talent that's ever been presented in any wrestling promotion. What was Mick Foley's first fucking quarter hour? Whether it be as as Cactus Jack in WCW or as Mankind in the WWF or whatever compared to what they grew into. So they're going by the, the ratings of the train wreck talent at the expense of building their own, which would increase their audience because somebody else would be being featured instead of the goofballs that, that, a large segment of the wrestling fans don't want to watch this show because of the point is you don't worry about what the guy's first or second or third quarter hour rating is. You pay attention to it. At, at, and not only that, but also the reactions they get and also the matches they have. And also the fucking ability they have to integrate with the other people on the roster. You measure that after you've brought them in and given them exposure and gotten them over as the quote goes. Then if nobody cares, then you fucking shit the bed. But just to fucking, of course, people are going to watch the dog fucking on the side of the road. First thing, because that is, is, is visual, right? Oh, look at those dogs fucking on the side of the road. And I've said many times, sooner or later, people get tired of watching them dogs fucking. And then you, you say, well, shit, I wish I'd have used that time a little bit more judiciously to start something that would have legs and I'll I'll close with this point the argument I had with Jim Hurd I said it, it was Arn Anderson and Sid Vicious because Hurd was all over Sid all over so Sid said I said you'd rather have Arn and or Sid Vicious than Arn Anderson wouldn't you and he looked at me so why I said well Sid Vicious will draw you a million dollars in one night and Hurd said well what's wrong with that I said because then People have seen it and they never want to see it again. Arn Anderson will draw you steady money for 10 years. And he couldn't get that. Anyway, that's my closing thought on that matter.